Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode. So today, what we are going to do is we are going to make our player have a more advanced jump. So if I go into play mode right now, our player, when he jumps, if I press the button really quickly, he moves up. If I hold the button, he moves up exactly the same height. There is no difference in how he moves. Maybe you don't mind this, but I think it'd be very fun to have it so that he is like Super Mario and uh, he, he, the Mario-esque jump, where if you hold it longer, he'll go up further. So we're going to get into it. We're going to jump into Visual Studio. So we created these headers last time and we've got public and private as the names. We're going to change these because they are not good names for a header. We want it to actually be informative of what we are doing. We did a lot of the hard stuff last time with the overlap circle and the ground check and the rad circle and all of that kind of thing. So now we're going to do a bit of easy stuff and we're just going to add some more parameters that makes him jump longer. And we'll have to add some variables to do that. Now, there are multiple ways of doing what I want to actually accomplish to make him jump longer the more you press the button down up until obviously a certain point. We don't want him to just keep going up. But... The way I've decided to do it is using floats uh, with a... Uh, you, you have a jump time counter that will count down after a certain amount of time. And this is something that we'll be able to set in the editor if we want him to be able to jump up longer while we're holding the button. We are going to change the headers. Uh, we're going to change this one to... Jump details. We are going to press enter under here, and we're actually going to grab all of this, control X, control V, and we're going to change this to ground details. Then under here, we're going to add one more header. Oops. And we are going to call this something along the lines of components. This we won't actually be able to see inside the editor, which is fine, but we are going to grab an animator next episode uh, when we animate the player jumping up. So that's something we need to be aware of. So we've got jump details and ground details. Now ground details, we don't actually really need to touch. It's all pretty well complete. We've got this uh, public ball grounded, which we might change at some point, but I'm actually thinking of changing to a serialized private uh, variable, but we are going to change a little bit up here. So right now we have our public float jump force. Well, we're going to add a few variables. We're going to add a jump time variable, which is what I was talking about before. So we're going to make that public jump time. Uh, sorry, we need to make this a float jump time. Then we are going to create another float. Uh, we probably don't need this one to be public. We can just make it private. We're going to call this jump time counter. And then this last one, we're going to create a private bool to uh, decide when we have stopped jumping. And hence I'll be calling it stop jumping. Okay, so everything is fine so far. So we've got our definition of grounded. It means to be grounded. No, grounded. There we go. And then we know that we use space to jump. So use space or w. We're just going to add jump with three exclamation marks so that we know what we're doing. Right, now that we've got a bit of admin out of the way, let's get into some hard coding. So what we were talking about before is we were talking about if we hold the button down, we want to keep jumping, right? So there's a simple way of working out the parameter part of that if we hold the button down. So we've already got up here if input dot get button down, right? If we, if we have pressed it, well, if input dot get button right jump 
So that's just if the button has been touched in some sort of way. Uh, the only time we're going to be using the jump button at all in our game is to jump, by the way. So it's not going to be some kind of worry where we'll be accidentally activating the jump while we're falling, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that, that would be very weird. So we have the whole uh, grounded thing here. What I just realized is we're probably going to want to set a variable for what the jump time counter and all that kind of thing means. But we're going to, uh, we'll, we'll do this definition first. So we're going to add a new, uh, a new part of jump. So this, this is supposed to look almost identical, but the only difference is going to be, and we haven't stopped jumping. All right. So if we're allowed to jump and we haven't stopped jumping, uh, and we're and the button is still being used, I guess. So if we press the button, and we're grounded, and if the button is being used, and we haven't stopped jumping, then keep applying this same force, right? Jump. That is that is that is what that is. Whoops. So we are going to keep jumping, but there's going to be a difference here, and that's going to be that we're going to set a counter for how long we can actually jump. So we're going to go minus equals the time that has passed. So time dot delta time. Now we don't know what jump time counter is going to be yet because we haven't initialized it. But something else that we need to keep in mind is that we want to right from the get go make it equal to the jump time that we want. So jump time counter is equal to jump time. Uh, so we want to make sure that that's equal to that on start. So whatever we set it to inside the editor, it will be equal. Now, and you know, we don't want that to change. Uh, more specifically, we don't want it to change pretty much ever. So we want to go, if we are grounded, we want to reset our jump time as well, because our jump has reset. So we should be able to jump the full amount of time that we want to jump for you could use this to create a cool mechanic where if you jumped you had a certain like jump meter but that would probably be in the case of you were using jetpacks or something like that we're not using jetpacks unfortunately we might it would be cool and that's why some of these things uh will be public and some of them will be private will uh, the, the the public jump time thing uh, if we ever wanted a, jet, a jetpack or a glider or something like that we could definitely use, and that's why that's public. So we're just going to do a little simple if statement here. Grounded. Uh, that's actually all we need to do. So if we're on the ground, jump time counter is equal to jump time. And yep, that should be fine. Now, the last thing we want to do is make it so that we actually stop jumping, right? Or we, we want to work out what happens when we stop jumping, more importantly. Because we've set it so that when this when this goes down... Oh, my bad, my bad. We forgot a... Uh, we forgot something here. I was trying to do this in the most logical way possible. That's why this episode is a couple of days late. I had to refilm it. So, in under here, we need to write... Stop jumping is equal to false so that's for uh that that's for this specifically otherwise uh this statement will never be true so i should have written that in pretty much straight away that could even be up like above this but it doesn't really matter in order but that was silly that's messed up my flow now okay so to keep jumping while button is active so yeah unity will just work out that this button uh something is happening to it basically so the get button down thing just checks when it's pressed right it, when the button goes down it doesn't care about when it goes up uh input dot get button is whenever the button is activated in any way so if it's going up down left right sideways uh through your eyeball it doesn't matter and so now lastly uh if if we stop holding the button. I might redo this. Uh, if we press 
the jump button. And then if we hold the jump button, right? And so now if we uh, release the jump button, just so it is nice and clear uh, for both me and you guys, because you got to remember, I need to read this as well as you. So we're going to input dot get key up. Uh, sorry, no, get button up. And we're just going to set this to jump again. Jump. And we don't need any other parameters in our if statement. So we want jump time, uh, jump time counter, my bad, is equal to zero. So that means that we can't just... Uh, that means that this will never become true again. So stopped jumping might be true, but the the whole input dot get button jump won't be uh, altogether. Then we want to go stopped. Oh, sorry, no, this is the bit that does that. My bad. Okay. Right. So we want to make sure that stop ju uh, stop jumping is now true, and that means that we can't hold the button and keep going up. So, and this is for jump time counter is equal to zero. So if we let go of it, uh, we don't have any more jump left. And we've also stopped jumping, which means holding it won't do anything and pressing it won't do anything. So we've set up all the parameters for what we need. Now, this is a reasonably organized bit of code, but does it work? Let's jump inside our Unity editor to find out. So I'm going to set this to two. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be any good, but that's actually all we need to set. That is, that is all we need to do inside our editor because we did so much uh, difficult coding last time. So we are going to press play. Now I want you to test this for yourself. Uh, testing is always an important part of game development because it's what makes it interesting, to be honest. I'm going to have to move the camera permanently at some point. In fact, I'm going to do it now. So I want to go to the game view and then we are going to just drag this across because this is infuriating. That'll be fine. That will be fine. I've decided it will be fine. All right, we're going to jump in our game. We got our little player character down here. He's going to come up. He's going to jump. Now, if your jump feels too floaty, people potentially aren't going to enjoy it. And I suppose the other thing is, uh, if he goes up too far, it's not interesting. So I'm thinking that two seconds is way too much, which is, by the way, what we what we set that to. That is two. That is the float form of two seconds, because it's uh, two minus time dot delta time. So after two seconds, that will be less than zero. I'm thinking we go with 0.5. Let's just see what happens with that. So I've, I might have overcorrected here, but jump. And he just keeps going up. I feel like I've put something in that might be a bug. So let me have a look through the code and I'll work out what I've done wrong. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I worked it out pretty quickly. Uh, we need to create another if statement. So inside here, we're going to create if and I just realized that our jump time counter, while it is being told min uh, to minus equal time dot delta time, so while time is being subtracted as it passes, uh, it would be helpful if we made that mean something. So we are going to have to add a little parameter in here that checks whether jump time... Oh, no, you know what? We are going to take this and we're going to put this in the original if statement itself. Input dot get button jump and we have not stopped jumping and jump time counter is greater than zero. I might put this in brackets. Just so it's clear that this is one statement, this is another statement, and this is another statement. And they all have to be true for us to be able to jump. So this means that while update is running, we are constantly checking that if this is happening, if this is not true, and if this is greater than zero, we are allowed to keep jumping. And that means that we won't go absolutely flying like we were just now. 
Let's try this again. You can see that 0.5 is a really big jump. Like, that's huge. So we're going to set this to 0.1. And let's just see what happens here. Maybe I've overcorrected. I'm going to shift that up to point. Actually, let's change our jump force. Let, let's try and uh, modulate between the two. So, remembering... Oh, no. That, I, that probably wasn't necessary. I didn't need to exit play mode. So, let's go... Yeah, 0.25. But we also want to set this to... Let's say... 2. And let's see what happens here. So that feels too floaty, right? We're jumping, but we keep going. So I don't want that. Let's go 2.5. We want to feel like we constantly go up no matter what. That feels a little bit better. I think I'd settle for something like 2.8. Because that, it feels like we're always going up at the same rate. And you'll see that we don't go up too high. Uh, we can make an easy jump like this by single jumping. But we could easily fly well over the top of it. So, you can create little obstacle courses for yourself with that kind of thing. You have effectively created a jumping platformer. So, we have, in the short time that it took to make this video, made ourselves a fully functioning platformer. All you need to do now is to create enemies and you are literally good to go. But obviously this is not a platformer series, this is a Metroidvania. That means both level design and attacking abilities that upgrade over time, maybe even jump abilities. So we're going to be working on some power-ups and things later on. Well, obviously the next video will be animation, but this kind of concludes the uh, player movement section of the tutorial. So, I hope you guys are still enjoying this series. It seems to be getting a reasonable response. Not as big as when I first started it, but that's never to be expected that people stay along the entire way. And I know a lot of you are finding it to be quite fun. So, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, leave a nice comment if you're still enjoying this series. And make sure to press the like button. Not too, not, not too hard. It, it gets smashed by every other YouTuber, so let's, let's just be gentle with it. Let me know that you're still enjoying this series, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.